Have you ever finished a story that left you thinking, what was that all about? They made you scour through YouTube's endless parade of ending explained videos to try and understand what happened. Since you feel like you've missed something, you may even feel like the creators themselves forgot to insert an extra scene, because the story didn't seem to have an ending. But instead, it simply stopped. The movie Boyhood by Richard Linklater and the manga Hikaru no Go by Yumi Hota and Takeshi Shobata have endings that feel exactly like that. Endings that feel more like a non-ending. Hikaru no Go is a comic about an Asian strategy board game, Go, where we follow the journey of Shindo Hikaru, from a complete beginner with zero interest in the game to a passionate, full-fledged professional. The story's non-ending happens after Hikaru finishes the most important match of his life against his strongest opponent yet at his first international competition. The story ends with his friend coming up to him and saying, this is not the end, there is no end. Boyhood is a film that follows a young kid called Mason, from his early childhood to his arrival in college, while he tries to make sense of life and figure out what he wants from it. The story's non-ending happens after Mason arrives at college and goes on a hike with some new friends. The story ends in the middle of a conversation, where his new friend is talking about the expression seize the moment, and that she thinks that the moment seizes us, in which Mason replies, Yeah, yeah, I know, it's... It's constant, the moments, it's just, it's like it's always right now, you know? These non-endings from Boyhood and Hikaru no Go are trying to leave the audience with a message about life. And this type of ending is the perfect way to express their ideas. Because when the final moment of a story does not seem to mean much of anything, or when it feels a little odd and out of nowhere, it simply means that the story didn't come right out and spell its message for the audience. So at first, you may not immediately understand what everything was about, because you gotta make an effort to draw meaning from the story. The creators are leaving this last bit of work for us. They want us to make sense of the story's message by thinking about everything that came before this final moment. So let's try to find out what Hikaru no Go and Boyhood's non-endings are trying to teach us about life. The best way to figure out what these endings are trying to say is through the story's controlling idea. According to Robert McKee in his book, Story, a true theme is not a word, but a sentence, one clear, coherent sentence that expresses a story's irreducible meaning, the controlling idea. The controlling idea is the purest form of a story's meaning, the how and why of change, the vision of life the audience members carry away into their lives. The controlling idea condenses the essence of a story into a single phrase, a phrase that describes how and why the characters' lives have changed. As an example, let's think about the movie Groundhog Day. You gotta check your mirrors, just side of your eye. Side of your eye. The film is about a man who is stuck reliving the same day over and over again. And it basically tells a story about a cynical, selfish man who learns to be selfless and loving, and in doing so, starts living a happier life. So this film's controlling idea could be simplified into something like this. Happiness fuels our lives when we learn to love unconditionally. If we pay attention, we can notice that the single phrase can be divided into two parts, value and cost. A story's value becomes clear at the ending, after the result of the final action of the story, and it is what the characters learn from their experiences. The cause, on the other hand, is the main reason for reaching the story's final value, and it tells us why the characters changed. Hikaru no Go and Boyhood are coming-of-age tales, stories about kids growing up and figuring out their place in the world. And at the end of both stories, the characters realize the same thing. They discover how to live a happy and fulfilling life. Both Hikaru no Go and Boyhood's final value could be condensed into something like this we can live a happy and fulfilling life. What makes these stories different is why they reach this realization, the second part of their controlling ideas. So let's go through both stories to uncover the cause of change in each one, to build their controlling ideas and have a clear picture of their final messages. In the beginning of Hikaru no Go, Hikaru has zero interest in the game. But after discovering an ancient board in his grandfather's attic, he ends up being dragged into the world of Go. Because this board 
houses the spirit of Fujiwara no Sai, the greatest Go player in history. His passion for the game was so big that his soul has been stuck on Earth for over 1,000 years. He cannot move on to the afterlife until he accomplishes what he was not able to in life. Kaminoite, the divine move. The ultimate Go move that only a true master at the game could hope to achieve. So Hikaru starts playing Go by proxy. Sai tells him what to do, and he puts the pieces on the board. And as the story goes on, the writer Yumi Hota and the artist Takeshi Obata introduce Hikaru to a large cast of characters, to delve deep into the world of professional Go. Meeting Sai and these people inspire Hikaru. He becomes infatuated by their overwhelming dedication and passion for this game. Getting to know these people allow Hikaru to discover his natural talent for Go, leading to his desire to become a professional player. The story is able to draw you in and make you connect deeply with all the characters because we're constantly inside their heads. The story is always exposing all of their feelings so we can understand where they're coming from and how they deal with their inner conflict. This makes the Go matches extremely engaging and full of genuine moments of tension and excitement. Because the games are not really about the technicalities and intricacies of Go, they're about the players themselves. A match is never just a game. There's always a deep emotional conflict behind it. During the games, we see the players struggling with the self-doubt, fear, and anxiety that comes from the pressure of playing an official match against a strong opponent. The games are challenges that the characters need to overcome in order to grow. This inside look into all of the characters, coupled with the series link, allowed the creative team to fully develop Hikaru's journey and his many challenges. From a total beginner, learning how to play with friends at school, all the way to a full-fledged professional, playing in tournaments against the best Go players in Japan and eventually the world. And this is how the manga is able to use Go to explore Hikaru's coming-of-age story and the controlling idea. Hikaru is a person who discovered his passion to play Go and is also a person who knows what he wants to accomplish with his life, to grow stronger and eventually reach the divine move. But this knowledge alone cannot bring him happiness and fulfillment, because Go is an extremely complex and competitive game. There are many talented and experienced players constantly competing with each other, players who have been honing their skills their entire lives. Hikaru and all the other characters must deal with the fact that simply knowing what you want from life and dedicating yourself to a goal may not be enough. Simply working hard, being talented or passionate about something may not be enough, because there's always going to be players that are better than you, and at some point, you'll hit a wall. A wall that will make you question your resolve, that will make you doubt your skills and abilities to improve. A wall that you need to overcome in order to keep going. To make it as a goal player is a path full of hardship where players constantly have to face their shortcomings and limitations. So at the end of the story, after Hikaru had to deal with many of these hardships, he has a chance to prove his skills by participating in a competition to decide the best three young players in the country. And he's able to earn a spot on a team to represent Japan at an international competition. And there, he has to face his strongest opponent yet. Someone who boldly claims that Hikaru's friend and mentor the one who awakened his passion, Fujiwara no Sai, was weak. Hikaru is determined to prove that he became strong because of Sai. Determined to prove that Sai's millennial passion and dedication for Go was not in vain. And when this game is finally over, Hikaru feels lost. He was so certain that everything he went through was about preparing him for this match, that now that it's over, he doesn't know what to do from now on. Is only able to fully embrace the story's value when he makes sense of the cause of change through the words of his friend and rival, Akira Toy. This is not the end. There is no end. Hikaru learns that no game, no matter how important it may seem, is truly the end. He understands that discovering your passion is just the beginning. Hikaru realizes that he and every other player are part of the same journey and play this game for the same reason going through the same battles ever since they first pick up the game and even thousands of years after their deaths. Be them young or old, beginners or masters, they're all striving to be better players, to push the game forward ever closer to the divine move, the divine move being an unattainable goal, the eternal desire to evolve, to grow and to learn. 
this allows every single player to become something bigger than themselves, to be part of the legacy of everyone who came before them and inspiring new generations to do the same, so that even after their deaths, they can live through others. And that's the cause of change in Hikaru no Go's story, learn from the past and aim to forever grow and improve. So the final message that Hikaru no Go wants to leave its readers with is that if we discover our passion, we can live a happy and fulfilling life by learning from the past and aiming to forever grow and improve. What is he studying? He's studying history and uh, Italian <laughs> as a minor. Yeah. Does he wanna? <laughs> does he wanna teach? I don't know. I think I think he's still figuring stuff out. Yeah. He'll figure it out. What if you haven't discovered your passion yet? Or what if you don't have a passion? How can you live a fulfilling life? That's the question Boyhood tries to answer. With Boyhood, Richard Linklater's goal was to emulate how it actually feels to go through life shooting his film over the course of 12 years to create a story that talks about this universal experience. So he came up with characters who are not extraordinary at all, people that we can easily identify with, using these characters to tell a story that feels natural, removing any feeling of a plot guiding the movie. This grounded approach is also the reason Linklater avoided using any musical score, noticeable camera movements or editing techniques to allow the audience to be completely immersed in these characters' lives, to feel like we're just watching them go through life. So I could talk about the film on a, can say, oh, 12 years, everybody gets old, and people would ask, well, so, so what happens in the movie? And I was like, not much, you know, but it, I was counting on the cumulative effect of, you know, the way we perceive cinema. You really invest in these characters, and I felt that it, potentially could have the significance that it has in one's own life, these little memories, if the investment was there in these characters. That these little things that have no business being in a narrative, they don't advance character, they don't advance plot, you know, what has to be in a movie, that you actually could have it, that be the essence of the movie, and it would matter because you are invested in these, in these characters. Mason is a kid with divorced parents that lives with his mom and sister. The story begins when his mom decides to move to a different town to go to college because she wants to afford a better life for her kids. During the first half of the movie, the story could be seen more as a story about parenting, since Mason is very young and doesn't have much control over his life. So at first we see more about the particular challenges and experiences of Mason's mother and father as they try to understand what it means to be a good parent trying to do what they think is best for their kids and at the same time figuring out what they want from life. But as Mason gets older and as he starts having more control over his life, the story becomes more about him, about Mason questioning life, trying to discover what is his place in the world, what type of person he wants to become and what life means for him. Mason becomes mature enough to notice that even though his mom is much older and more experienced than him, she's still trying to figure things out. She's still scared, confused, and uncertain. She was able to achieve all of life's milestones. Marriage, kids, a college degree, a good job, and a house. But she does not feel fulfilled. Quite the opposite. She feels like she wasted her life. Mason's dad, on the other hand, was never able to achieve his lifelong dream of becoming a musician. And yet, he seems to be happy just by settling down and starting another family. Mason cannot understand how that's possible. How can someone who achieved everything that she wanted end up unhappy, while someone who failed at his goal can end up happy? If he can't make sense of this, what hope does he have at living a fulfilling life? These thoughts keep piling up in his head as he gets closer and closer to leaving for college. Mason thinks that's when his life will truly begin, the place where he'll have to fend for himself and start building his own life. So he desperately wants to make sense of things before this moment. But even after talking to many people about it, nobody is able to come up with an answer that makes sense to him. Mason just wants to know how he can be sure that he's making the right decisions, or what is he going to do if things don't work out. And most of all, Mason wants to know what is the point of it all. But the answer to these questions, the cause of change, only comes to him after he arrives at college. Mason is only able to embrace the story's final value at the last scene of the movie, thanks to a conversation about living in the moment with a girl that he just met. 
You know how everyone's always saying, seize the moment? I don't know. I, I'm kind of thinking it's the other way around. You know, like, the moment seizes us. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, it's constant. The moments, it's just... It's like it's always right now, you know? Mason realizes that you can't really live your life if you're just worrying about the future. Just worrying about getting somewhere. Thinking you'll only be happy when you reach some goal or milestone. Life is what happens between these big moments. It is the journey. It is what's happening right now. So you have to embrace it in living every single moment. Everyone is always trying to figure things out. Because at the end of the day, that's all we can do. We can only do what we think is best and hope that eventually things will work out. So long as we're giving our best and allowing ourselves to experience many different things, we're doing okay. Because these small, simple, almost inconsequential and meaningless moments are what at the end makes up most of our lives. And they can guide us to our passion, to a place where we'll truly feel happy and fulfilled. And that's the cause of change in boyhood story. Follow your heart, enjoy the present moment, and allow yourself to live through many different experiences. The final message that Boyhood wants to leave the audience with is that even if we're not sure where we're going, we can live a happy and fulfilling life by following our hearts, enjoying the present moment, and allowing ourselves to live through many experiences. Now that we understand what Hikaru no Go and Boyhood were trying to say with their stories, it becomes easier to see why a non-ending was the best way to finish both stories because it is the most powerful way to convey the message that the stories were exploring. The non-ending reinforces the idea that meaning does not come from the end, but from the journey. That there are no endings, that an ending is just another beginning. These stories were never about reaching a specific milestone or goal. They were about reaching an internal realization. And this is what marks the end of the story. The non-ending puts the audience in the same position of the characters. Just like Mason and Hikaru were guided to this realization by their experiences, and at the end were helped by other characters to make sense of it all, this story is asking us to go through the same process. As we learn from the controlling idea, the ending simply gives us the final value. To make sense of it, to discover the cause, we have to think about everything that came before. These stories gives us all the pieces to make sense of their endings by dramatizing their message through the story events. And at the very end, through some subtle dialogue, they help us put it all together. But ultimately, we are the ones who need to find meaning in it. Just like the characters in the story did. And when we're able to extract meaning from a story by ourselves, something truly special happens. The story's message becomes more than just about these characters and their journeys. It becomes personal. It becomes something that we carry into our own lives. These stories try to teach the characters and the audience to stop living just for milestones and goals. Because when you eventually get there, life just keeps on going. Real long-term happiness comes from just trying to do our best with a desire to continue learning and evolving as people. That's how you can live a happy and fulfilling life. So the next time an ending makes you feel lost and you feel the urge to type that ending explained in the YouTube search bar, just stop and try to make sense of things yourself because you might just learn something that could change your life. Hello, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. So it's been a while since I posted my last video because I always try to make the best videos I can. And sadly, this takes a lot of time. And for the last few months, I just haven't been able to put as much time and care into this whole process as I wished. That's why I've been focusing more on making shorts recently. But I've already written the script for my next big video. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because if you enjoyed this video, you're not gonna wanna miss the next one, where I'll finally talk about one of the most bizarre and unpredictable HBO shows that you've probably never seen. I'll see you soon.